it's some 20 odd years in the past, even really? from this story. Um, and yet the two of them are still, mm, well, traveling in the opposite direction, but still carrying certain wounds. Thank you. Hi, Claudia. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> As we all know, you're playing a character whose future we do know, Nagini, but in this film she's a sympathetic uh, figure and she's a friend to Credence, so we have kind of no idea what happened in the interim. Has that made you look at the character in Harry Potter films differently, and in what ways? Well, um, that doesn't change the fact that Nagini is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> um, I look at the figurine and I'm like, I want it, but I'm so scared. Um, uh, but yeah, definitely knowing where her story begins makes me feel sympathetic about uh, the Nagini that we see in the Harry Potter films. And I'm just so curious how she gets there. Mm -hmm. You don't know? I don't know. <laughs> She's so good at it. You guys are so good at it. I've been interviewing them for years and I can never get anything. I try. It's because we don't know anything. <laughs> we always smart. The only person who knows. That's smart. That is smart that they keep it from you. Uh, Alison and Dan, we just love your character's relationship. It's yeah. the best thing ever. Um, it's an interesting romance. It's forbidden romance uh, in the Wizarding World because Queenie is a witch and Jacob is a nomad. So how does that theme fit in with uh, J.K. Rowling's stories, and what do you think they found in each other was so special? Go for it. <laughs> well, they're kindred spirits. They are uh, two incredibly warm-hearted, loving human beings, and their love is kind of simple in a way. They just adore each other and care for each other, and unfortunately, these stupid rules that um, say that they can't be together, that it's legal, m make everything just so much harder for them. And so, because of that, um, they have to make some decisions to uh, figure out how to stay together, and Queenie takes matters into her own hands. Um, maybe not in the most <laughs> wise way. <laughs> but in a way that I think any woman would if she could. But yeah, you know, you've got to do what you got to do. I'm less oh, trying to try it. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, <laughs> I've learned, uh, learned that that's not the way to get Free someone to... Free will is a bitch, man. Yeah. <laughs> How is the snow not melting? <laughs> it's magic. It's all magic. Eddie, I wanted to know, Newt's love of magical creatures has been his calling, but in this film he's been called upon for a different mission. So how do you think that changes him in this film and, and for things looking ahead? Well, I feel like Newt's always been a bit of an outsider, but he, he's found great love with his creatures, mm -hmm. and, and he feels very comfortable there. And he's sort of created his own little cocoon of a world to live in. And in the last film, this one, they opened his heart quite substantially and, um, and it began to integrate him into the world. But, but he's been called on by his old teacher and master, Dumbledore, um, to go and help. And he's got to sort of come out of his cocoon and start making choices. So Dumbledore's trying to get him to go to Paris to start helping, but really it's, it's, uh, it's Catherine's character, Tina, that's pulling into Paris, I think, to begin with. Love. It's always love. <laughs> he has a funny way of showing it up, so by getting engaged to somebody else. An endearing way of showing it, I think. <laughs> Jude, um, did you have an opportunity to talk to J.K. Rowling about the character and really dig in and, and get some ideas? Yeah, I mean, before uh, I started, it seemed the obvious thing to do, and she was very generous uh, with her time, and... Um, gave me a, a kind of recap of pretty much, I think, everything we know from the books, but with a little more detail and a little sense of where the character was going. But I think for all of us, you know, she's she's got this obvious... Yeah. You know, she told you more well, than she told any of us. That's what I know for sure. We're all furious and jealous because you're Dumbledore, so you get to be, like, weirdly omnipotent while we all struggle in the dark, and it's genius, and... I made, I made this argument that he's, always three, he's three beats ahead, so I guess that's why I was like, if he's three beats ahead, so he's three films. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Claudia, Ezra, and Dan, why do you think J.K. Rowling's characters and stories speak to such a global audience? I think, um, you know, it's like the, the cycle of the hero's journey, you know, the cycle of the myth, Joseph Campbell stuff. He's, it's the search for the mother and the father. So we've been hearing these wonderful mythologies as part of our zeitgeist and collective 
unconscious, yeah. and then she has this amazing way of making it real and tangible, and, yeah, you know, like the, yeah, you know, so, yeah, I like this. You like that, right? It was great. I got scientific. You did. You dropped the sciences. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Eddie and Jude, how is Dumbledore's relationship with you different from his relationship with Harry Potter? Oh, they're more, they're more, they're more equal. I mean, uh, at some point, obviously, uh, Dumbledore was a, was his teacher, but they're they're they're, they're adults. They're also, uh, I'd say, as wizards, you know, they're on a par, and and. Uh, well, that's, that's really generous. <laughs> Thanks. I've got to be honest, as I said it, I, I, I'm going to put that on my CV. Yeah, you know, Dumbledore's magical skills. <laughs> magical skills. As I said it, I, uh, yeah, that's a little too generous. Um, no, but no, there's a kind of, it's, not, it's like a sort of master-apprentice relationship, but in this, in this, in this film, Newt's, I feel like Dumbledore was that teacher that didn't necessarily stick to the syllabus. He was one of those teachers that you looked at and you admired and you loved because they kind of waved. I always imagine like Robin Williams in uh, uh, Death Society. Society. Oh, Captain, 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 let's go outside. Oh, Captain, 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 Captain. Turn to page 48, rip it out. <laughs> Throw it out of the window. <laughs> now jump out of the window. <laughs> now fly. Uh, now, Zoe and Callum, we are right by Hogwarts right now, but you guys actually got to film in Hogwarts. We did. What oh. was that like, and how jealous was the rest of the cast? How, how yeah, jealous I was very jealous. Very jealous. <laughs> you guys are so much jealous. You went too, actually. I, know, I, was, I lived in the classroom. I mean, that's your, that's your pad. Yeah. <laughs> Albus doesn't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> very safe in the walls of Hogwarts. But I mean, the sets are just so incredible. So feeling, I mean, being transported to that place, you're actually there. Yeah, there's so much history. And then being surrounded by students that are wearing the uniform that have owls. I mean, the owls. The owls. <laughs> The owl over the, the edge for me. The owl, um, owl is. But there's one, there's one scene in the film in which Zoe, your character, goes back to Hogwarts. I've got to say, it's so moving. Why are you doing that scene? Is so beautiful, and it kind of inhabits all of our nostalgia for going back to Hogwarts. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we dream of going to. So, and having yeah. a scene with Dumbledore in Hogwarts with owls. I mean, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. I cried during that scene. I did. I cried through about seventy-four percent of the film yeah and that was one of the parts where i remember specifically that i was crying how many people cried seeing the film yeah i was one too a few times actually. i cried a couple times yeah yeah i i can see why um Catherine and allison we know that the one chooses the wizard but we've seen that they all have a certain design to them what was it like to receive your wand for the first time and how does it reflect your character's personality they actually gave us choices, um, and we kind of got to get a choice. <laughs> yeah, on the first film, I think that some, some things changed between the first and second film. It turns out Jude didn't get wand school, yeah. but the rest of us, oh, you didn't either? Well, either. it's on YouTube, because it looks really good. I don't think it's because we didn't need it. Sorry. Uh, they, whatever helps you sleep at night. Whatever helps me sleep. I'm sure you watched Us in the first film, and that was all you needed. Exactly. Like, oh, well, I'm Our guys are so insensitive. Oh, definitely. I'm going to stand over here while you guys talk about your wine. Oh, oh, damn. Well, Dan, I'm going to come over there, too. Just to rub salt in the wound, uh, Cal, yeah. what did you learn in one school? I learned not to go over the top, you know, the initial instinct is to just really go for it, but I don't want to throw my brother under a bus here, but I did bring the one. He broke his wand in the first test. <laughs> how? They always fired me. Breaking news. How? How does this happen? Uh, in yeah, malfunction. Okay. <laughs> so what did you learn in one school again? Just to not go over the top. It's okay, so really how now to break this wand? Subtlety. It took about seven months. <laughs> Really? No. Oh, goodness. Thank goodness. You don't have that long. <laughs> I found out from Jude just now that he basically, once, since he, when he got the part, he was on holiday with uh, with his family, and he just went and picked up a twig and spent the entire holiday just walking around with a twig with his family. And I it was good practice. I love that commitment. They put on a thing of water. <laughs> Claudia and Dan, this question is for you. Some of you have talked about growing up reading the Harry Potter books. So what kind of impact did they have on your life? And what was it like learning you were going to be part of the Wizarding World? Claudia. 
<laughs> I mean, I read all the books too when they first came out. Korean translations weren't available. So, yeah, I had someone send books from the U.S. to me. Um, yeah, yeah, so it definitely felt like I had some kind of secret access. Um, but I think it's so cool that Nagini is not just part of the Fantastic Beasts film, but she's such an iconic character in the Harry Potter films. Yeah, I, yeah it's such a blessing. I'm so thankful. Okay. Um, also, Catherine and Ezra, I know that both of you underwent a little bit of a physical transformation since the first film. New hair, new clothes, new confidence. So how does that reflect the changes in their lives in this film? Change your hair, change your life. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, we had to change Credence's haircut because there was this actor in Alien Covenant who had the exact same haircut. Stop. True, I stole it. And I liked his haircut in the first film so much. You gotta day. glow up. <laughs> you gotta glow up, baby. Then we came back, came back to do number two, and they had it, we were all like, oh, gosh, dang it, we gotta, we gotta change the haircut. I can't wait to see Tina I got number three. Yeah. Buzzed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you can answer this. Do you all have a favorite beast? A wampus cat. <laughs> Because it is the Wampus Cat. Eddie, this is going to be tough. I mean, my favorite piece, and I'm seeing some of my favorite t-shirts ever over here, which are basically Nifla t-shirts, um, with my like, jewels hanging out of a pouch a bit. But in this film there, as you guys have seen it, will see there are baby Nifflers, and they are the most adorable, beautiful, frustrating things. Oh my god, there's one there. There's actually one there. Um, and they are heavenly and nightmarish in equal measure, and they made my life. Didn't you say that, was, we, that we nearly didn't get the Niffler back, right? He was really demanding. Yeah, Niffler, I mean, Niffler was obviously the breakout of the first movie. His trailer was huge. His trailer massive. His trailer. He, like, got lawyers, yeah. agents, publicists. He would only wash in Evian. Seriously. You weren't allowed to look him in the eye. So we had to hire, like, children. <laughs> <laughs> Diva. Uh, Jude, Catherine, Callum, and Zoe, who can think of a spell they learned while playing your role, and I'm sure there's people here that can help you if you get stuck. <laughs> I know Allison says Alohomora, because I just love the way that she said it. It's burned into my memory. Alohomora. Oh. Oh. Oh, one more time, one more time, yeah. Alohomora. Oh, it's so good. So oh, good. good. From Siddiqui, that word, and it means a blessing on thieves. That's another one of the ones that's not from Latin. Somebody in the crowd know what I'm talking about? Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, so, so Eddie's right. I did carry around a stick for most of my summer holiday, practicing, and, and then I only got to make one spell in the whole of the film. I love that this is it unusual was, was, to you guys. I love that you're like, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? I spent a whole family vacation playing with wand, like a fake wand, and I'm like, okay, well, welcome to our lives. This is your life now. <laughs> Eddie and Ezra, every Harry Potter fan remembers the spell to combat a bogart. And as we all learned, Newt Scamander's greatest fear is to work in an office. No chance of that happening. So we're good. You're going to ask us what our worst fear is, aren't you? But if you had a bogart, what would it be? <laughs> well, so personal. Kate. It's not, it's not an office for you, right? <laughs> you love offices, don't you? I really love offices because I love stationery. I don't have a weird obsession with stationery, so I love them. Provided it's an office with a stationary cabinet, then you can kind of go and get like hole punches and stake those far away. But Judy and I just weirdly had a bonding moment just now when we were asked that question. We realized that we both are obsessed with like tidy things. Um, so like a messy room would probably be my bogger. Do you, are you very clean? I'm at home? really aggressively tidy. That's great. That's an amazing yeah. quality. I don't know. That's actually a great quality. <laughs> <laughs> Quite tiring. I wish when you have your practice, you're ridiculous. <laughs> Just uh, come on up to the third floor, yeah? This is a hard one. What was your favorite Harry Potter, Potter book, book, film, and why? Oh, Azkaban, because like, uh, <laughs> that's how I came into it. I, um, Gary Oldman, I love his acting, and I was like, let's see what he's doing in this huge franchise. So that's how I uh, approach it. How about you, Ken? I don't do favorites. That's good a, for you. That's a good political answer. Good I appreciate it. <laughs> Without any spoilers, this, is, this might be hard, but did anyone have a favorite day on set and why, or favorite scene without giving away anything? <laughs> together, it was Eddie, Dan, and I, and um, I had, it was another sort of dinner food situation scene, but they had given 
me this like big slop sort of that like instead of the beautiful strudel of the first one I've made this like slop and I just, yes, like and, copy design. yeah and I'm slightly uh, irritated with uh, Newt and so just just like flinging slop on plates is so funny and, and then also Dan was a bit loopy so the whole day was just <laughs> like mayhem and Dan was loopy? What? <laughs> And in this film, I get three hugs. Oh, yeah. I get a hug from Dan Fogler, which is like the loveliest thing in the world. Oh. I, I get a hug from my brother twice. Oh. Oh. I love you, man. Thanks, I'm convinced you guys were separated at first. This is, it's uncanny. It There's a possibility, but I'm sure. We actually grew up about 400 meters from each other, so there is a chance. Oh, talk to my parents from the post oh, I don't know my dad. We got to do 23 and me. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. All right, we have a bit of a speed round for you guys. You can just point if that's easier. Who has the best sense of humor in the cast? <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Who who can you count on to always remember their lines? <laughs> True. Go, keep going. Who is the most likely to crack up and laugh, ruining a take, possibly? <laughs>